I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment, and I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm just here to apologize. That's so scary. Okay. I raided to sleep in a sea of stars without finishing it. I know, I know it's like... You heard me right. What do you think of that? But it's true, I did have some conflicting feelings on reviewing this book since I actually didn't get past a quarter of it. Um, but at the same time, can you blame me? If I had such strong feelings that I felt the need to review the book without actually finishing it, then I must have known something about the book. I dropped it, I rarely drop books. And since I do review books, and I know people want me to review books as high profile as this one, I am gonna go ahead and review it regardless. And I'm gonna let you know my thoughts on it and why I dropped it specifically. Now, many of you might be thinking, why is this guy reviewing a book that he hasn't finished? And that's a very reasonable criticism. A lot of people have told me that when I asked them their opinion on whether or not I should review this book. And to that very reasonable point, I do have an explanation, but I'll be going into that later. For now, let's just stick to the review, and if you're interested in that, I'll explain it later. To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. This is a one-star book, one of the worst books I've read in a long, long time. And that's obviously because I didn't finish it. There's no conclusion to speak of. If there was a Brandon Sanderson book, even though I don't 100% love it, I would still complete it because I know that the ending is so, so much better than the beginning. However, the reason that I would continue it in the first place is because the beginning is tolerable. It's not a bad beginning. That's the problem with this book. It does not have a reasonable beginning. Now let's be specific. I did not continue reading past the 220 page. That is about a quarter of the book since the entirety of the book is roughly 850 pages. The most interesting reaction that I had towards reading this book was in the last day that I was reading it. I was up pretty late and thinking, well, I need to complete this book because I need to read Stormlight after this, and I want, I really want to read the Dresden book, and I really want to move on and get ready for the few books that are coming out this March, and I really, really want to get my hands on those, but I can't do that unless I finish the book that I'm reading. I don't want to start reading another book and then never really get back to this one. Everything falls apart. I learned that from Oathbringer, so I don't want to repeat that mistake again. So when I finally got down and sat down and read this book, I was thinking, well, this is reasonable, because I did have a couple of pages previously that I thought were very, very good. However, when I sat down to read this specific page, I just felt myself getting bored out of my mind. It's one bad page. It might not be the entirety of the book. Like, as I said before, there were a couple pages that were just fantastic. Some really, really interesting, well-written pages. But this one bad page made me rethink the entirety of why I was reading this book in the first place. And that's a very, very interesting thing to think about because that well-written page was well-written. And if that page was so well-written, then why wasn't this one? You would expect the entirety of a book to have a roughly a very consistent quality, but this one didn't. Now there's very huge ups and downs in an 800 page book. You can't fault the author for that. It's just impossible to just maintain the same consistency towards the whole book. However, there's a certain degree of consistency that I've come to expect after reading so many books. But as long as it does not get to the point where I'm sitting down and I cannot even get myself into the book, that is when it falls apart for me. Now I described it on my Goodreads as, this is a book that if you think about all of the great things about any great book, you have none of those in this. And that's the biggest problem. This is such an average book that I cannot help but drop it. And it's not even that. It's that so many parts of this book were not even just average. A lot of it was just so incredibly boring. Now, the main thing that I do have a problem with is just the complete overwhelming amount of world building. And usually that would be considered a great thing. At the end of this book, there's like, I don't know, 50, 100 pages of just pure world building, of just explanations of science and different, different things that just weren't explained in the book. And that's awesome. That is super, super cool. The problem is that this seems to be the only part of the book that is good. It's as if this whole book was written for the purpose of world building. And when there's no good characters, when there's no good journeys, when the mystery is so boring, when it's taking a long time to do anything, then the world building shouldn't even be a priority. We should be stopping worrying about the world building. We should focus on the character because that's what we're talking about. Now, this story did open up on a very interesting beginning until the big inciting incident happened. As soon as that happened, everything changed. And there was a bunch of cool stuff happening, interesting stuff. Okay, cool, 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 fun, 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 fun. Okay, and then it got boring and then fun again and then it got boring and then it got cool again and then it got boring and then it got cool again. And now I'm noticing a pattern. It says if there's some interesting incident and then a really long lull until something else a really long lull to something else. Usually you fill these small lulls with interesting incidents, character building uh, moments, just small plot devices, just interesting things that just hook you until the next big event. 
This book had none of those. Even Brandon Sanderson knows how to do this. I made fun of him for having such an on the nose plot device for no specific reason in Oathbringer, just for the sake of making it interesting, for no other reason, just to make it interesting, just so that we could get to the next plot point. And I clearly criticized him for that because that is not very good writing. It's not very good writing to have something that's interesting, not because it means something in the story, but because it's supposed to be interesting so that you can get to the next plot point. That is kind of bad writing. This takes that to another level by not even trying to include anything interesting between the main events. Well, not even trying is a big statement. Uh, it is to say that he clearly knew that you have to do these things. He clearly knew it. Like, there's a lot of character building in between. There's a lot of new characters. There's some interesting stuff going on. There's some world building being explored. But none of them, none of them are at all interesting comparatively to any of the interesting events that are going on in the big plots. There's nothing even close to that here. What this leads to is just unbelievably boring segments of maybe 50 pages or so where just absolutely nothing happens. Nothing happens, and I mean nothing. There's characters happening, there's some people talking, she's learning about the the, the, the spoiler thing, and she's, she's exploring, she's talking to people, and she's, she's world building, but none of them mean anything. None of them mean anything. And it just gets to the point where I'm reading, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, okay, they're talking, they're talking about something else. The writing here isn't even that good. It's, it's very subpar writing. It's like worse than Brandon Sanderson. So, you know, you know where my bar is? That's pretty bad. They're talking about something and it's not that interesting. And then it's not that useful. And then they're preparing to go into something interesting, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And I go through two pages of this stuff. That was the page I was reading, two pages absolutely nothing interesting happening. I don't care about the characters. I don't care about what they're doing because why they're doing it has such little impact and so uninteresting. And then I don't care about what they're holding, what they're talking about because these things, they're just character building stuff. And it gets to a point where all of the stuff that he's building up, all of the stuff that you're supposed to build up in order to make a story engaging, all of them, have not been engaging enough for me to actually believe that they're engaging in the moment. He has not built up the engaging past of this book in order to make the present interesting. He has a couple of interesting moments with a couple of conflicts and none of them actually make the present or the characters or the things that they talk about interesting. There's no better example of this than the characters. Now at the beginning, there were a couple characters and okay, they were very reasonable. There was like two or three that we cared about and like two more or three more that we had no idea what they were talking about. So there was just two or three good characters. These characters were immediately interesting to me. Fine, awesome, they're cool. And then immediately something happened to them. Now there's three characters that we don't really care about, we don't know about, but these characters absolutely had nothing to do with the plot. And that's reasonable, that's fair. But then why include them, right? Because they have no impact on the current story. They have no impact on the story that happens at the, at the point where I dropped it. They have no impact on the big inciting event. There's so little impact of these characters that it feels like he's adding characters just for the sake of making it interesting and making it feel big and making it feel like it's, it's more than just this boring little story with two or three people that are important. And that idea of adding so many characters that many of them just become utterly redundant just sticks with me because that's exactly what this is. And once again, we have another giant cast of characters at the point that I'm in the story right now, and maybe two of them are interesting. And I'm mixing them up because none of them have very interesting personalities, but at least I know like two or three of them. Okay, I know this name, I know this name, I know this name. I can picture these three people, but the rest of them, they're not even interesting enough for me to picture. I, I don't care about them at all. And not only that, but he knows that I don't care about them. He's not even making an attempt to make me care about them more. And yet consistently they're brought back to the story again and again and again, as if they're meant to mean something. And it's just such an interesting thing because no writer would do this. No writer would include random people if they're not useful. That just doesn't make any sense. It's wasting screen time, it's wasting book time, words, it's wasting all that stuff. So it's just an entire encapsulation of what's wrong with the story. It's boring, the characters just are meaningless. There's, the entire story really is meaningless. And the, the mystery that's going on, don't get me wrong, it's an interesting mystery. I was reading it for the mystery. I wanted to know what was going on in the story. But the mystery itself, while we did get a couple clues here and there, the clues weren't satisfying enough to warrant us continuing the book in hopes of the solution to this mystery. Because for all I know, the mystery is gonna happen at the 800th page. And what am I reading the first 700 for then? I, I it's, it feels like there's no point to so much of the stuff that happens in the story. And because of that, it makes the characters feel flat. And because the characters feel flat, it makes the entire mystery and story and like the actual soul of the book, it feels like that doesn't exist. It feels like that's just completely manufactured and utterly boring. Now, once again, let me make this clear. 
This is based on me reading 200 pages of this book. Now, I, I don't know if that's a very fair assessment because obviously there's like 600 pages that I didn't read. And so in order to justify me making a review about this and me talking about it without completing the book, I'm gonna move ahead and uh, sit down for a second. Yes, yes, now for the justification as to why I'm reviewing this book at all. Now I do know that you need to complete an entire book to actually review its contents. Fair enough. But when I'm doing a review, it's very specifically for the purpose of one thing. I want to let people who have not read the book know what they're getting into. If people go into your book and do not enjoy it, they will drop the book. I know most people who read fantasy are not like that. That's simply our community. Most readers worldwide will not continue a book if they find it boring. They will simply drop it. And that's, that's how it is. And that's how it should be, frankly. If the author does not hook you within the first page of the book, they are not doing a good job. They are simply not writing well enough. We can assume that at least the beginning of the book is the author writing to the best of his ability. If that's not correct, then we have a problem here because the beginning 200 pages should be some of the best writing from the author. Now at the ending, of course, it's gonna be better because of the plot and the characters and stuff, but the beginning should be written the best because that is how much effort you need to put into it. You can see this phenomenon in so many other places. If you read the beginning of a comic book, if you read the beginning of a manga, if you read anything, the first part of that piece of art is always going to be the best because that is the part where they hook you. They hook you into the character, they hook you into the story, they hook you in with the writing, with the beautiful art. I am within that threshold of people who are going to continue the book and then decide whether or not they're going to continue or not. And so, does it not make sense for me to then review the book with those people in mind? A review is predominantly useful for the people who have not yet read the book and are looking into reading. Now, I know there's a very big percent of my audience who have already read the book, and that's why they come to my reviews. They want to see what I think of the book, and that's very, very reasonable. And to those people, I'm also providing a review because I'm reviewing the beginning of the book and I'm reviewing how much I disliked it. That is why I feel the need to review this book. I feel like the opinion of someone who has read the beginning and disliked it so much is far more valuable than the person who has slugged through it despite not liking it. Plus, just the sheer amount of people that review a book only when they like it is so, so high. It, there's so few people that review a book that they dislike. But this is one of the biggest authors of our time. Christopher Paolini, author of Aragon. He can take a couple of hits. And so, in my opinion, I reviewed the book very fairly because I reviewed the beginning and that's the most important part of any book. Right? The beginning is the most important, important part of getting into a book, so it should be the best. I reviewed that. I've also stated in all of my reviews that this is only a review of the first 200 pages and I've made logical, logical assumptions about what that means for the rest of the book. Now, even if the book gets amazing, even if the end of the book is some of the greatest stuff in science fiction history, I would not recommend it because of the beginning. It's simply not written well. And if the beginning is not written well, then what does that say about the ending? Now, people very often say, you know, the ending was awful, even though the beginning was great. Stephen King has a lot of that. The ending is awful, but the beginning is great. And so for a lot of people, this turns them off because if the ending is so awful, then that ending of the story takes away from the beginning. And that's a very reasonable thing to assume. It's cool for a lot of people. If you value the beginning more than the ending, then that, that's gonna be important. And most people do. People value the journey more than the destination. And especially here, the journey, of this book, The Journey of the First 200 Pages, is subpar. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. I do hope that made sense. I'm reviewing this book not in the hopes of saying that the entire book is bad, or that the ending is definitely bad. I'm reviewing the first 200 pages just to say that the beginning was so bad and so boring that I inherently felt like continuing the book was just not worth it, and I felt that the entirety of the book was devalued by the beginning. I'm not saying that the ending was definitely bad. I'm not saying nobody would be willing to read the ending of it. I'm just saying that in my opinion, the beginning of the book inherently devalues the end. And of course, if you really did want to see the review of the entire book, you can see it in any other review. Uh, I stated clearly in the title and everything that I did not finish this book, so. So I hope that I've made my thoughts on this clear. I'm not saying that this is an awful, awful book in its entirety because I can't claim to say that. All I know is that the first 200 pages of this book are so subpar that I cannot even imagine anyone putting in the effort to read 600 more pages if that is what we know so far about it. I know that I'm not a sci-fi guy and I've definitely put that aside because the mystery in this, dude, I was so excited for the mystery in this. Like the ending, I was really excited to read the entire book and then get to the last 100 pages in order to just read the science because world building is interesting. It's a great, interesting piece of the story and I'd love to learn more about it. The issue here is that while sci-fi is not exactly my forte, and I know that I'm generally not a sci-fi fan. 
It's not the sci-fi aspect of it that's got me down. It's the character aspect. It's the story aspect. It's the plot. It's the mystery. It's that this book, while so beautiful, what a beautiful title, what a beautiful cover, what an interesting premise that it's got, ends up falling flat in its execution. Because it feels like the story writer, and I read Aragon, and Aragon, it, it felt like, okay, well, first of all, Aragon, it's a good book, right? It's a good book considering what it is. If you try to say that Aragon is like high literature, then I'm going to stop you there, because it's not claiming to be high literature. It's supposed to be a simple fantasy book that's just an interesting adventure, and for that, I can respect it. This one is supposed to be something higher than that. It's supposed to be this great, big, epic sci-fi adventure that's, that's more beautiful, and it looks like a space opera almost, but it falls flat because it simply does not have the quality that it needs in order to be such a high-ranking sort of story. I, I don't believe that it's that good, and while it's, and it's pretending to be that good, and I, I simply can't stand that, so I'm giving it a one star. I guarantee that I'm gonna get a bunch of comments about how I did not finish the book and how, how it's unfair of me to review it, and I completely understand. My thing is, I read 200 pages, that's basically a book, okay? Let's be fair, that is a book. And so I'm gonna consider that read, even though I didn't read 600 of the pages, I'm gonna consider it read, it's gonna go towards my 2021 books. I I'm, I'm cool with that, and I know a bunch of people are gonna comment about that, and that's cool. Go ahead, comment. Um, your, your opinions are very useful, and I'm, I'm very thankful for all the people that are commenting and letting me know what your opinions are, even though they're negative about me or the book or my review of the book. I don't really care. It's all interesting to me, and I'd love to respond to your comments and see what you guys think. So thank you guys so much for commenting. If you enjoyed my review of this book, or if you agreed with anything that I said, or you found it interesting at all, I would really, really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. It really, really helps get my YouTube videos out into the algorithm, and it helps me get seen more, and it's, it's, it's all just great for the channel. And if you do that, it would mean a lot to me. It's very nice of you guys. If you enjoy me and my reviews or any of my past videos, you can take a look at my channel to see any of them. You can subscribe. Uh, you can see any of my future videos when they come out, and you can always unsubscribe later if you find that you don't enjoy my videos. So it's all up to you. I would really appreciate it though. It really helps me uh, grow the channel. It really helps me feel good about myself as well. Like people are watching my videos. That's awesome. And that, that's that's a reward unto itself. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for watching this one-star review of To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.